Hi everyone, Beth Bennett here, taking a quick seat after lunch and uh, here to introduce you to a new segment we're doing here on YouTube. Um, try to get one out every week, I can't say that I will. Um, I've tripled, uh, tripled my workload so it's been a little difficult. Um, so here's a brief explanation of why we haven't been around for the last three, four months. Um, Enjoy the clips. And I hope you enjoyed the clip. So, um, yeah, you can see we did some partying, we did some boating, and we did some golfing, and, and then we expanded our business. <laughs> and happy to do so. Um, Bear's here with me. You can probably barely see his little nosy, but um, yeah, so Nestled Feathers um, grew over the summer like a weed. Um, like so many weeds in my yard um, because I was so busy all summer. I, it's not like I haven't been shooting. I have. I just have not edited anything. And now I need to do a big bunch of photography here tonight. So I think I was just about ready to introduce a new segment, new series, whatever that you want, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's called Source, Shoot, Sell. So that's what we're going to concentrate on, how we source our resale items. Um, and I will give you a heads up, it's everything. <laughs> Anything and everything, yard sales, shirt sales, craft sales, uh, antique stores, um, yeah. Salvation Army, Restore, those are my two favorites. And um, any estate sales that are in the area. But we also have purchased two now two, count them two, <laughs> cases from liquidation places. The first one was from liquidation.com. Then there's also our first purchase from Bulk, B-U-L-Q, um, for those of you unaware or new to the reselling game. Bulk is a very popular one because it has set shipping rates. In other words, $30 for a case, $200 for a pallet. I am so dying to buy a pallet, but right now I have a humongous pile over there that needs to get processed first. So, um, my first tip for anyone trying to get into the resale game, develop a strategy, develop a schedule. This is how you're going to do it. And this is what I'm going to talk about a little bit right now before I get into the photography part. Um, I don't like getting bottlenecked and jammed like that. I want things to flow a little more smoothly. So, backing off on the sourcing, perfect timing, it's cold weather. Uh, the yard sales are, like I said, pretty much a seasonal thing around here up in upper, upstate New York. Not upper, we're lower. We're, we're right near the Pennsylvania border, actually. Um, so we're in the kind of the Corning, Lindley, Caton area, and that's right next to Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania, where uh, we also frequent a lot. Uh, a lot of our shipments actually get sent out from their post office. So um, it's all very close and countryfied and backcountry roads get you anywhere around here. But I digress. So, um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about how I source um, and what I do when I do source. And, uh, yeah. So, what do I do when I source? When I source, I obviously I go out and I buy it. I And how do I find where to buy? Well, um, you can go to different places like Facebook and find groups that will tell you when and where the sales are. Um, I look in your local paper if you're... Um, still reading newspapers. I know probably many of you aren't. Um, but uh, yeah, so you go out and you find the sales. You get up early in the morning and you get there and get a number and 
get in as quick as possible and start making your little pile like a squirrel and yeah, hope you have enough money at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the sale in order to pay for everything because it's not like I travel with a bankroll or anything. I am literally working on what's left over from my paycheck every week, so there's not a lot to work with there. I love bringing the husband along because that like doubles my budget and sometimes he actually pays for my stuff. I wish I would have, oh, that was such a good estate sale. Wow, it was like the best one of the whole summer. And we get up to check out, he's got his armful, I've got my more than armful, a couple people's armfuls and um, they totaled mine up and he paid for everything. So what did I do? I went right back and got in line again, of course. <laughs> I got back in line and went through again and it's still I still have like night sweats I think sometimes thinking about all the stuff that I left behind there because oh it was all sewing and woodworking <laughs> so it was like oh, the perfect estate sale for my husband and I you know I like to sew he likes the woodworking and um, yeah so there was like a whole closet of embroidery software that I left behind there. On the last day, it was everything was half price, so it was like twenty dollars the first day I went. I went back the second day with the husband, and everything was ten dollars, and I still didn't grab one single title. Oh, my arms were so full of fabric and notions and other stuff. Oh my goodness, you know a lot of it with in you know having resale potential in mind. A lot of it for personal use, like I said, but. Uh, yeah, those titles, oh my gosh, my my sisters, my sister-in-laws, they're my sisters. My sisters, Donna and Sandy, they both sew all the time. And I actually, Donna works in a quilt shop, so um, uh, their name is So What? They're in Addison, New York. Oh, I know what they pay for that embroidery stuff. And it was like, oh my gosh, those things are worth like hundreds of dollars each. And it was a closet full, there was... There was hundreds. There was hundreds of them, and I had left them all behind. Okay, so th that's the one thing you want to also, probably tip number two from me would be go prepared. Um, go prepared with bags. Go prepared with um, tools if necessary, um, at least in your vehicle. You don't have to take them inside the sale, but uh, you may find something in there that you need to take apart in order to take home with you. So <laughs> definitely um, doesn't hurt to have some tools and you know, make a trip to the bank first <laughs> and get a good amount of cash to work with because you never know what you are going to find in an estate sale. And, and yard sales are pretty, I, I hate to say typical, but, you know, it's stuff that's unwanted. Sometimes you'll find treasures in there, but estate sales guarantee treasures, especially <laughs> considering the age of some of people's possessions. I mean, um, yeah. So, state sales, number one for uh, local sourcing. And liquidation, um, like I said, we got our first one with liquidation.com and our second one with bulk. Um, I rather prefer the liquidation.com even though it is an auction. I had to win the auction in order to get it. It was very exciting. Uh, I, I kind of preferred them. Bulk is a little iffy on some of their conditions and, you know, the shipping is a lot more too. I mean, the shipping wasn't exorbitant with liquidation.com, but it was just a case. You get into pallets, the shipping can get quite expensive. So, bear, you're moving. <laughs> I have a ghost over here moving the chair. It's the dog. Okay, so when I get stuff home, the first thing I do is get out the camera and videotape me unloading it. <laughs> so that um, is a given part of the equation. But after that, you must get serious. And you need to start a log, a journal of everything that you bring home and um, what you paid for it. And then as I'm doing that, I'm looking it up and finding what it is possible potential resale value is and writing that down as well I really need like a bigger notebook or a spreadsheet <laughs> actually would be better you know if I had all this on a spreadsheet and yeah that would probably take me 10 times as long than writing so this is for me working right now but uh, yeah uh, I could see a barcode scanning system coming in handy you know especially for like the liquidation stuff is all 
I like to buy, you know, brand new, in package, ready for a resale type stuff. And it all comes with a barcode, so it would be very simple to log it all in that way. What I really need is a good assistant. Any volunteers? <laughs> Anybody work cheap? <laughs> Any interns um, in the resale business in, in the Corning area, if you're interested, please give me a give me a shout out. I will put you to work. But uh, yeah, that's the first thing I do is write it down, look it up. Got to know what it's worth before I know where I'm going to sell it and how much effort I'm going to put into selling it, reselling it. If it's not worth anything, you kind of want to pick things that you like anyway because you may end up living with them for the rest of your life and they'll end up in your estate sale someday. But, so, there's the sourcing part of my source, shoot, sell segment. Now we're going to go over here and work on the photography part, because that's where I really got to get my buns in gear. And I will take you off camera, or I will take the camera off the tripod. We're going to take a little quick tour around the studio. I'm going to reset you up a little closer to the set over here. And then um, we're going to start shooting. So, shooting product. That's right. I'm going to show you how to shoot some products. So, stay tuned. Get comfortable. Grab a snack. Grab a beverage. And enjoy the show. Be right back. There's the jungle. There's the jungle area of the studio. And this, again, is my setup for what we are going to be doing in this segment. If I ever stop just farting around here and <laughs> showing off but we have done some things so I wanted to catch you up because I'm not sure what content's going to end up where anymore we are also providing content for the library system so um, back to the death pile yeah you see that bulk box hiding over there it's hiding but it's ready and as soon as I get all those little molds over there shot and a couple of other items from the first because I'm a very linear thinker sometimes. I have some items that were too big from the first lot. And, uh, you know, a few big things that I picked up along the way. And I just, you know, whatever I feel like shooting, take a number. It's all got to get shot eventually. So I try to do a little bit of each of it. And also let me explain a little bit as we look at the lovely, juicy contents of my toy box, my toy buy, oops, sorry, from Bulk. Um, yeah, my strategy as far as marketing my items, um, our Etsy shop, We that's where we sell our exotic wood scraps. Um, if you don't know by now, Nestled Feathers kind of um, our online selling experience um, pretty much began with that selling uh, the scraps that we get from our day job, which deals with working with all kinds of exotic woods, beautiful exotic woods from all over the world. Um, now you are looking at what used to be um, the area where we did all our paint pours. And I used to have a gray folding table and those big plastic folding tables up here. And presently where I'm standing is um, pretty much where the background was. I had a Big, beautiful background which is now like rolled up behind me but we're panning this way so let's just keep there's more stuff still drying on the rack that needs attendance that I haven't gotten to um, yeah I've got tons of that stuff tons of those projects there's my glass area which is right now housing the small this is the small shooting tent that I use which actually goes like kind of the other way more like uh, more like that <laughs> the background rolled out <clears throat> so that's kind of what that looks like um great little item few limitations but not you know not not, not unhappy with the purchase considering what i paid it was like 50 dollars from walmart but this is all hiding like my glass area my microwave my kiln um more artwork laid out everywhere drying in need of finishing but yeah this is my glass area and this is my grinding area right here where i have my glass grinder just on the power cords and uh, projects 
like these brackets go to those shells that need to still be screwed to the wall but yeah there's a bunch of pendants in waiting laying around and this is the new like this is what i have shot listed well not listed but shot recorded all the information about which is another step in the process i mean as you go about shooting you should also be um like packaging it up basically how you're going to ship it if possible um and recording all that information the dimensions of the package and the weight so because you'll need all that to list it um, most places where you list items these days want that information that's how they determine the shipping um, so yeah that's a nice start <laughs> and already I have pretty much have Cliff was like you know you're gonna need more shelves I'm like I'm gonna need a hallway of these shelves are you kidding me um but yeah so where we're we gonna work that in we we've got to get rid of some temporary items down in the downstairs and that may end up this may end up going downstairs because you know that's back out the door to get sold once it's I mean shipped once it's sold I can talk and we are back around oh well kind of didn't show all the studio we were going we were headed this other direction so let's walk around um yeah so there's my drying rack it's kind of on wheels so it can be moved around and behind it is just tons of counter and tools and um and yeah this is just my my work counter and let's get back around to this little thing on the end houses my dremel and all its attachments and this is the new um, island that we built we didn't build it but we put it together using two of these workbenches that um, Harbor Freight sells for $149.99 <laughs> and they're lovely I mean inside the drawers oh, let's see what drawer do we have that isn't too junky um, there's lining inside the drawers I don't know if you can see that there's green lining inside the drawers and um, yeah so four drawers on each side and uh, shelf underneath which is already loaded with paint and supplies and all kinds of stuff but yeah love love these love these they got holes in them they've got vices on the end to hold stuff while you work on it it's like it's just like love this is, this was a good investment getting these two and we got them at a local we didn't have them shipped uh, we just had one open up in our area so and down below here you'll see a bunch of panels that look like I'm like some kind of artist or something but I'm not <laughs> these were all picked up at a uh, yard sale a whole box of them for five bucks so I bought them to paint over I really have mixed feelings about painting over other people's artwork but and that brings you back around to the death pile of stuff that I need to get photographed. So, moving right along, I am going to go ahead and pause this video. Nice little studio tour for you. And um, I will talk to you in just a second from the tripod. So, hope you enjoyed the studio tour. And now I am going to get up off my knees and get over here and get photographing. But I want you to um, hopefully be able to see what I'm doing. And once I turn that light on, the light's probably going to be pretty awful. So I may have to move you around a little bit to get you to see what I want you to see. I also have the action camera up here. And I probably will end up using some footage from it too because I'm going to try to set that up somehow over there so that we have a second camera view to work with um, when editing so hopefully this all ends up making sense and you learn something about how to photograph product at least using one light and three pieces of foam core so let's see what we can do oh yeah one much easier getting down there than it is getting up i must say um i keep a little black cloth over my camera to keep the dust off of it. Sometimes it sits there on the tripod for a while before it is
is needed or used. So I have this very heavy little step stool down here full of weights. And I have a feeling I may put that to use a little bit today because I need to get up and see over. I'm going to go ahead and turn on that light. <laughs> there we go. All right. So yeah, I finally found a spot where it was at kind of decent lighting so that I could actually talk to you You're far enough away, but yet hopefully be able to pan you over to see what's going on down here too. But I also need to block a lot of this out because it tends to make the whole exposure go off. But yeah, so I'm shooting these candy molds right now. Um, picked them up in that first liquidation.com purchase. So I have uh, approximately a dozen of them, I think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe less. I, I lost count a long time ago. That's how long some of this stuff's been sitting around. I think I made this purchase like two months ago. And it's just now I'm finally getting it shot. That's how busy it's been. Sourcing, sourcing while the season was available to source. So I spent a lot, of, and it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. But I, again, I resisted today. I'm staying in. Pedal to the metal on the photography. You've got to get it done because we're not going to be able to sell it if, until we photograph it and list it. So hopefully you can be watching what I'm doing and be able to, let's just loosen you up a little bit here, um, bring you over here. And uh, so I've already shot the piggies. Oh, that, there goes my lighting again block out that and light entirely there goes my pig or my piggies are shot I'm now shooting some bunnies I got to get them on and um, it's kind of setting there's a piece of foam core setting underneath it so it gives it a little bit of a shadow um, and the shadow is falling basically right down along this edge only because the light is coming straight in from this direction so and it's looking pretty good and I may end up taking you over closer to this camera so that you can actually see what it looks like to the back of the camera and you don't have to wait for me to show you images actual images because that's just gonna slow my production time down in editing so <laughs> we don't want to do that I'm gonna try to keep the editing simple so it actually gets out there to you um, so this one is done and I have moved on to Bunny and I need to recheck everything because, whoops, some of the stuff that I just brought over is now in the way, as long as, as well as bare, but, uh, yeah, I'm not sure where I'm at on my battery or any of this. Um, hopefully you can see something. Let's go even further and maybe up a little bit. Hi, <laughs> here I am. I'm up here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm now looking down into the camera. I wanna, we we actually um, will use sometimes objects to block the item once it's on set and you need to move something. You just bring in a couple of whatever, you know, blocks of wood, uh, whatever you have available, little boxes. Um, bring them in and use them to block where the item was and then you can lift the item out and have it go right back in. Another tip for photography for where in the frame is possible. You want, when you're shooting, and, and this isn't a straight up and down position, actually to be straight up and down, you know, to keep all your lines parallel in the frame is a good idea. But you can kind of fake it a little bit too. Um, so we're faking it right now. <laughs> By, you know, like I said, just building the item up maybe a little bit. May, if you have the item pretty much parallel, you want to try to keep things parallel. Think parallel planes in order to keep your lines straight and you don't end up with converging lines of your rectangular and square objects. Just a consideration. Of course, I'm sure if you are an eBay or Etsy seller that you are already familiar with some of these things. Perhaps not. Um, I know some people just shoot with their phones, so um, all kinds of skill levels out there. Hopefully this is helpful for some of you. Um, let's see if we can bring you even in closer to where if I can get that tripod to go just a little bit taller, or this one to go a little bit lower so that you can see <laughs> what's in the back of the frame. Or I may just take it off, just kind of pull it over here for a minute and show you. But uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just pull you over closer. 
Hello. <laughs> Take you carefully off the tripod. Flip the screen so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and yeah, now you're looking at the top of the set and the back of the. The, in, in the background, you're seeing the rolled seamless. So I'm just going to aim you slowly down so we don't get... Oh, thanks, camera. My camera has like about a 30-second shut-off time on it. <laughs> so, there we are. Okay, we're over here. And now you see what I am seeing. That is what I am looking at and photographing. So, as you can see, I can zoom in and out from there. But, um, as I mentioned, let's just focus again so hopefully you're focusing um, yeah so um, you just want to try to keep your product square in your frame it makes cropping a lot easier um, you don't have to crop in so tight in order to get rid of the distortion um, the eyes will correct for a lot but not everything so try to keep it straight that helps and as you can see it's nice lighting it's nice soft even lighting because it's just bouncing around everywhere in there. And uh, so the shadow is also very soft. Let's get you off the back of the camera and actually have you look right on set for a minute so you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in slowly. <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse my gravel voice. Getting a little thirsty. I'm not used to talking quite so much. Believe it or not. I know that's hard for you guys to believe. But it's the truth. Okay, there you just heard the camera click off again. So yeah, that is um, the product that I am shooting currently. Let's go ahead and zoom back out because we're going to hopefully get down off the step stool here without um, breaking your neck or leg or an ankle. We have had enough falls in recent years that we don't need any repeats. So down she goes step by step and shows you and reminds you of my death pile. I mean, that's, like I said, there's, I've shot two, let's get this up around my neck. I've shot two glasses on so I can actually see. I've shot two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six more to go. So, not quite a dozen, but feels like it. And then I am moving on to some other big items and like I said my goal for the weekend is and I wish I could do a time lapse of all of it for you but obviously I am I've got my work cut out for me here this is another item that was from the first haul the first liquidation haul it is a very nice large garbage container I would even use it as a cooler because it is like waterproof inside. They're very nice. Obviously, the one that I photograph, I'm going to keep myself because it's going to be coming out of the packaging. So, another tip when you are photographing, if you are doing lots, you know, where you have multiples and uh, something needs to come out of the packaging and you don't mind keeping it, um, you probably would be better off shooting it that way here is an example like this is a nice t-shirt but really they're only going to get an idea of what the t-shirt looks like from the packaging itself because um in order to get top dollar for it i need to leave it in the packaging <clears throat> at least by my honest opinion of doing business that water over here okay. follow me to the watering hole um, yeah, let me just get a sip of water here so I can talk. Okay. Hello, bear. See, he's always right there, right where, like, I step back and I, I can tell you how many times I almost trip over the poor boy because he's always right there, right behind wherever I'm working. God bless him. Um, I love him. He's my boy. Um... But yeah, folks, so, uh, okay, I guess I'm like running out of things to say. I should probably flip the screen and go selfie mode and uh, say, <laughs> hope the light's good enough. A little, a little yellowish. Uh, most of uh, the lighting in here is tungsten. Those big overheads are very yellow. 
And that was also, if you remember <laughs> some of the paint pours, that was a bit of an issue. And I'm so happy to have these wonderful, beautiful, neutral, con controllable lights. I mean, I can dial them into any degree from 56 to 47, I think, okay? Or I, I, I'm probably ha I probably have those numbers all screwed up, but in either case, I can go warm or cool, no problem. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to bring you back in. Um, I've moved on to a different type of product, so I had to change my lighting a little bit, and <laughs> now the lighting's really bad on my face. I'll come back over here. Um, so yes, I've moved on to a different product and um, much larger, doesn't need to be shot like down, needs to be like the camera needs to be way back. So um, I changed things a little bit and uh, hope you can see that from this shot here. Let me just go ahead and scoot around here, flip my screen back. I'm going to go ahead and take you off camera. It's just easier for me, I think, um, to give you a better idea of how I have changed things. So as you see, the light is now aimed high in the opposite direction, right shining on this very dark black. Anytime you have a dark black object on white, you are going to need some light. So you can see it's really tight to the top. It's coming in. It looks like it's going to light it just fine. Um, I haven't even begun to set the camera up yet the camera is still in its old position so I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> try to put you in a spot where you can see that happening and uh, looks like probably right back here would be a good spot so you can get a hopefully decent lit view from the tripod so there we go um, flip my screen back so I can see how bad I look. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the camera pulled back now and in position. Let's see how far back we've got to go. Hope we're not too far. Of course, I'm not sure what you're even seeing now because um, you're probably just seeing a lot of light. So I'm going to just aim you a little bit more this way. Try to even that out with some of the window light. Hi. <laughs> so yeah. The camera's coming back this way, and we're going to have to go down, and I'm going to have to go back up there and futz around with, uh, we've got a leg that's longer that we need to, like, get you back down a little bit there. Just gonna try to level this up a little. We do want to see a little bit of the top of the case, so we don't want to go too low. Just a little bit more. Back up. You don't want to get too extreme in your angles. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. I'm working like a horse in here. And I need a fresh one. And it's almost that time, so... <laughs> Probably the next thing is going to come back as a nice fresh glass of wine. And then the photography will be done for the day. Like I said, don't shoot and drink. Um, you'll end up with a bunch of wasted time, basically. But, the good news is, this is the last, no, I, I take that back. I have one more, the last two products that I have to shoot from the liquidation.com haul. Which was the, my smallest one. The small first one that I started out with, so... All right, let me just keep yakking at you while I go ahead and finish getting this set up. And we want it to be as big in the frame as possible. I know I'm not going to have a problem focusing from here. But I do want to see a little more edge um, or a little more of the side of the bag. So I'm just going to move that a little bit. There we go, because there is a mesh pocket on the side as well as the front. And this is a time when props could come in handy, you know, like if you've got, I don't know, anything. Um, this is being marketed as a garbage bag, but I'm not buying it. It's more like a cooler. 
Um, I've got to do inside shots. That's the other thing. When you're doing photography, don't be afraid to do as many descriptive shots as you can. Um, even if it maybe like deteriorates or detracts, not, not deteriorates, detracts from um, the overall beauty shots, you know, type shots of your product. Um, people would rather be informed than adorned, I think, or, you know, dazzled. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, do the close-up shots and all the insides and backsides and every which way but loose. But a couple of props right here would be good because I like props in my beauty shots. So I'm trying to think real quick what I've got. I've got right now, I've got clippies. <laughs> my clippies and my pants. They got to come off. Okay, some props. What could, what would you, a can or a bottle... You know, like if you had a bottle of drink, a bottle of water would be a good prop. Um, like a map or some kind of, I don't know. So that's why I'm having a hard time buying this as a garbage bag because garbage bags don't usually come with mesh side pockets, but coolers do. So I'm just saying, I think they got it wrong. And I'm going to have to probably double check this product before I list it, look it up on eBay and see if I can find um, the exact same thing somewhere being sold and see what they're listing it as because I think they've got it wrong. I think that might be a mistake on the manifest because it does not look like a garbage bag to me. Although it does, you know, it goes on your car like that. Like it's like a back, it's like a backpack for your car seat. Okay. So to me, it looks like it's, would fit, you know, like a six pack or something. I don't know, a couple of bottles of wine, maybe. <laughs> it's tall enough. You could definitely get wine in there. Um, let's see what I might have for props. What might I have for props? I may not even end up using a shot like that. I don't know, but it's better to go ahead and get it now than lose it later. So I see my batteries running out and uh, hopefully you got enough glimpse of that setup, that lighting setup to make sense. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down and get, get this thing shot and all right, just wanted to show you the new setup, okay. <laughs> okay guys, I love you. It's the end of the shoot segment and um, we'll catch up with you on the cell part. Bye-bye, gotta get to work.